Hey everybody, my name is Nate, you're watching WASD20, and today we are going to be trying to make our own bases for miniatures out of clay. I floated this idea earlier today or yesterday on the uh, mini painting subreddit, which is a great subreddit uh, that I like to visit quite frequently, and uh, pretty much no one there said this is a good idea. Um, and wow, why didn't I think of that before or anything like that? So I'm open to the idea that this might not work out and it might be a very bad idea, but I really wanted to try it. Uh, people did mention a lot of ways to get miniature uh, bases on the cheap, so I might talk about some of those ideas too. Uh, but in the past, I've bought some that are not super cheap. These are really nice, I like these, but they are, you know, gonna cost you about probably six bucks for a 10 pack or something like that, maybe five bucks at least. Now, I have to admit, I'm kind of a cheapskate, so again, this might be a failed idea, and I just need to fork over the dough for the real deal, but we're going to give it a try. All right, so I'm running this in hyperspeed here and just narrating over it. Uh, I've got about a quarter of the block of clay that I'm working with, and uh, first step is going to be flattening it out. Um, I press it between two cutting boards. That's parchment paper I've got underneath there, by the way. I, I wanted wax paper, but we didn't have any in the house, so I decided, well, maybe parchment paper will work. Now I'm taking a rolling pin and trying to roll it out flat. One of the problems with the rolling pin, you'll notice, is it's kind of causing some wrinkles, so I decided to get rid of it. And um, yeah, I didn't, wasn't really sure how to avoid that. The clay is pretty wet. And this is not an exact science. This was one of the greater struggles I had, is getting it even and getting it the right thickness. So I, I took my other base and I was trying to eyeball it and see if it was about the right base, but it's not going to be even. There's just almost no way to do that. Um, at least for me. I should say up front, I am not very good at working with clay. Uh, there are probably people who are good at this who are screaming at their screens right now. Two devices I'm using, one is a paint cap and the other one was a piping uh, tool for like piping frosting. Uh, that was the paint cap there and the metal one is the, for the uh, piping bag um, tip. And uh, that one definitely works better. It cuts through. I think it makes a little bigger than a 20 millimeter base. and. Um, so that was my main tool there. Then I tried this uh, paint, craft paint lid as well, and it required a little more force. It was not quite as sharp, even though I did actually sharpen it a bit with the uh, X-Acto knife. Still was not, um, not as sharp, not as clean a cut. One of the biggest struggles you're going to notice here is trying to get these up without totally ruining them, because they're kind of stuck to the cutting board. And um, yeah, that's, that's going to be one of the bigger struggles here. In hindsight, probably should have just left them, let them uh, dry on the cutting board, uh, but I thought I wanted to get them up and put them on a different surface. So the piping bag I'm noticing is uh, the the tip is the uh, best tool, and so you see me using that a lot more. Um, it just gave a cleaner edge. Here I was measuring to see how they, about how wide they were, and um, yeah, again, not much experience working with clay, so. You know, there are things, I, I could try it again and probably do some things better for sure. Um, a lot of this was just trial and error. Again, this is my experimenting. So I decided, you know, I think I got enough here for one batch and I'm going to try to get them up. I couldn't really get them up very well with uh, with my hands, so I started using this wonderful cake frosting spreader thing. I don't know what you call it, but um, fortunately my wife was uh, asleep and didn't have to see me using all these kitchen utensils for clay. <laughs> But uh, I'm putting them on parchment paper there to dry and kind of gave up on the uh, cake spreader thing because it wasn't doing so well. And using my fingers again, which uh, also is not doing so well. You can see just kind of how wavy and crappy it looks. Um, so, yeah, I struggled. And then I got a pile to my left there on the upper right that is just <laughs> pieces that were too bad, too far gone. So I just thought, uh, I just need to scrap these and try, uh, try again. So all that work for this little batch here, folded it over, and I'm going to just press them down and make sure they're actually kind of flat, because in pulling them up, they became less flat. So hydrate and go again. Added a little more clay here to what I had. All right, so here I've added some more clay to the batch, still under a quarter of the total package. And now I'm really going to put some weight on it, all of my weight, try to flatten it out. And uh, fairly flat, but still going to need some rolling. So over the rolling pin again and again that paper kind of wrinkles and causes problems here um, so eventually I abandon that I'm trying to once again kind of gauge the height compared to my 
normal base. And um, yeah, just trying to get rid of some of the edges here, make a nice square piece so I can see what height it really is. So one of the reasons I wanted to redo it here is because I um, noticed it was sticking so badly to the cutting board and I thought, well, if I do this on the parchment paper, maybe it won't stick so bad and it'll be easy. But that led to this hilarious little sequence of uh, me cutting them with the um, piping bag tip and finding that they, get, they then stuck in the piping bag tip. They're going to stick somewhere, if not the cutting board, the piping bag tip. So um, that led to me blowing them out of there. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is the part where I kind of realize, uh, what am I doing? This is dumb. But it makes for hilarious television, so it's all good. So cutting a bunch of these, and I, I think overall it is working better. I'm having to disrupt it less with my fingers. Here I decided to try to cut one with the uh, X-Acto knife around my um, real base, store-bought base, and uh, makes for a little bigger. Those were 30 millimeter, and um, generally don't want 30 millimeter because they don't fit an inch square on a battle mat. So anyway, this overall did work better. At this point, I've taken a little Spider-Man kitty spoon from the, uh, the silverware drawer from my kids, and um, tamping down the edges, trying to keep them from getting too frayed. And uh, yeah, they've just, you know, there's little bits of clay. So I just want to smooth them out by going along the edges with that Spider-Man kitty spoon. And it worked all right. Um, now I'm going to try to kind of flatten them out once again, uh, because yeah, they've kind of gotten a little distorted, and I want to make sure they are um, pretty flat. And at this point, I'm going to tamp the edges of the other ones, uh, which I had originally done, realizing that they needed a little smoothing on the edges, too. I added a couple to the junk pile there. That just didn't look any good. And, um, yeah, examining them, trying to just finagle a little bit. Took a butter knife at some point here and decided, <clears throat> you know what, I'm going to try to uh, cut a little pattern here, like a, like a stone floor pattern. Uh, which I had recently seen someone do in a YouTube video with a sculpting tool, mind you, which I don't have any of. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, butter knife was my weapon of choice and uh, trying to just maybe cut a little pattern here. I figured I've got some wet clay here, might as well. Uh, the, the video I watched was using green stuff or something else, but um, hey, wet clay, might as well try something, just a little experiment. So, there's the one that I did. Uh, it doesn't look very good. I really did had didn't have any idea what I was doing, but finagling a little, I uh, figured this is, an, this is all an experiment, right? So uh, this time I am taking the um, frosting spread of my bobber and I am actually trying to flatten them out because I've noticed that, yeah, they're just not, you know, putting the cutting boards on top and trying to flatten them out that way didn't really work so well. Got to really flatten each one out individually. I'm also kind of adjusting the edges a little bit and trying to make them a little more round where I see they might be a little lopsided. All right, so the bases are done, and I'm going to be letting them dry now. There are several ways, you've probably heard me narrating the process, but there are several ways in which this did not go quite as expected. And um, I am interested in seeing how they turn out, and who knows, if they turn out really nice, despite some of the foibles along the way, uh, maybe I will do it again. We're gonna let them dry overnight, and we'll take a look tomorrow. All right, so the bases are dry. Um, I'm now about two days, it was two nights ago that I uh, originally cut these and made them. And um, yep, now they're completely dry. And um, you can kind of hear the, the sound there. Uh, my impression of these is that um, they're okay and they're, they're totally good enough for some people. Uh, but, you know, they're not gonna be um, ideal for everybody who, especially people who take their, their miniature basing very seriously. So, yeah, the tops here, you know, obviously got marked up, and we, you could see that before. We knew that was going to be the case. But um, ultimately, that doesn't really matter because I, I usually add, uh, for me at least, I usually add terrain um, to the bases, um, like this one right here. So, you know, add some, some kitty litter pebbles and, and um, some, some flocking and stuff. Uh, so not going to make a big difference for me. But the edges, you know, I'd be a little more concerned about and you can see this one's pretty good uh, in terms of just being a nice clean edge but it's actually a little wavy this one just a tiny bit off 
they're not all perfectly flat. Uh, totally good enough, sufficient. Um, I just got some blue tack holding it here now. Yeah, not not ideal. And then uh, this one right here, uh, these are some goblins I've been working on, these uh, Pathfinder goblins. Work in progress. I am hoping they'll fit pretty well on these, and I will use some of the better ones for these little goblins here. Paint them black, add some terrain. And uh, so I'm planning to prime them, paint them black, add some terrain. But you can see, again, the edge, not perfect. Uh, pretty good. You know, there's a little divot right there on that side. Uh, but, yeah. And this one, yeah, this one's pretty good for flatness. And most of them are actually pretty good for being pretty flat. But, yeah. You know, some of them are, are definitely worse than others, so some of them I would, I would toss. <laughs> this one right here got pretty messed up. Alright, so my parting thoughts and my, my final kind of analysis here of this little experiment in making bases out of clay. Um, I think they turned out okay, like I said, uh, but in the end, I don't think they're worth it. I probably spent about a dollar on the actual clay for these. I spent like five bucks on that pack. Um, I got it for 50% off, normally 10 I think. But anyway, probably about a dollar for the clay I actually used here, so super cheap. But paying four bucks more, you can get some uh, you know, better bases that are going to look nicer, and um, you, know, you don't have to put in all that work. So I'm going to share some of the tips I got on the uh, subreddit here for mini painting. Yeah, thanks to everyone who commented on my post there and uh, gave your thoughts getting bases on the cheap. Someone said uh, they buy bases from Litco. A couple of people mentioned that. Uh, they have nice cheap wooden bases. Uh, really nice website, really slick to kind of customize your own bases, your sh shape and size and material that you want. Let's see, what else? Uh, someone did mention that they have actually made molds before and you can get a kind of cheap kit at the craft store to make molds and then you can pour plaster into them. And you could actually you know, take something a little more complex like this or even one that has terrain added and uh, you can make a mold for it and then pour plaster in it. For me that's that sounds a little uh, complex and I probably stay away from that. Uh, a couple other good sites here um, someone said just using coins you can do that. I've used coins for weight before and I could see actually just making it out of, of a coin too if you're gonna be adding terrain to it. And then uh, fender washers that's that's a really good one that I think I'm gonna be trying to use so uh, thanks for JR Etzer uh, for uh, pointing that out. Fender washers, you can get them, they're like 10 cents each, maybe 12 at the hardware store uh, for a big box of them, and they are perfect for basing your miniatures. Again, I've put washers on the bottom of miniatures before, but um, to add a little weight on plastic miniatures, but you can actually put your miniature right on that washer, and it's just a tiny hole that you can fill in with some putty or any old you know terrain material. Yeah, that could be a pretty slick idea for uh, getting miniature bases really cheap. A couple other ideas here. Warlord Games, uh, Grey Storms mentions, uh, sells a pack of uh, 20 round 25 millimeter bases for about five bucks. Uh, their website, I had a hard time finding that. I think they might be based in the UK, I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I finally did track them down, but it took me forever to find uh, bases on their website. So. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good tip too. So there are lots of places you can buy them very cheap. Uh, eBay, someone mentioned just getting a bunch of small wooden discs on eBay. You never know what you can find there. So yeah, I enjoyed this process of, of trying, but I don't think I'll be doing it anymore. I think I'll just probably be buying some uh, fairly inexpensively. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's the way to go for me. But I'd love to hear from you too. Uh, what do you think? What are some ways that uh, you've based your miniatures in creative ways? What are some ways that you've uh, kind of made your own stuff to be a little more self-sufficient and save some money in this hobby, which can get pretty expensive at times. That's all. Everybody take care. Thanks for watching.